Hi guys, and welcome to the sixth video in this series on making a 3D endless runner in Unity. This has been a highly requested video, and in it we will add a jump to the player, as well as create different types of obstacles. Before we get started, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and ring the bell icon so you don't miss another video. Without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I'll do is open up our player movement script, and in it, I'll create a new variable. This will be serialized field to allow us to access it in the inspector, and I'll call it float jump force is equal to 400f by default. I will also scroll down and create a new function. This will be void jump. And in here, we need to check whether we are currently grounded because we don't want to be able to jump if we're in the air. And then if we are, then jump. To check whether we're grounded, I'll say float height for the height of our player is equal to get component collider dot bounds to get the bounds of the collider and then dot size dot y. Now I can say ball is grounded is equal to physics dot raycast for the start will be transform dot position the direction will be vector three dot down and the distance will be height divided by two because the origin of our player if I select the player and focus on it the origin is in the center so I want to get half of its height to check whether it's on the ground and then I'll also just add a small amount, so 0 0.1, because if we're on the ground, we want to raycast slightly below the player to check if it hits the ground. And then after the distance, we should enter a layer mask. So I'll say ground mask for now, and with a semicolon, and then let's create the ground mask. So again, serialized field, layer mask this time, and I'll call this ground mask. To jump is super simple, I'll just create some space under it, then type rb for our rigid body, dot add force, vector 3, dot up, multiplied by jump force. Now we just need to call this function when the player hits jump. So in the update function, I'll say if input dot get key down, key code dot space for jump, you can use whatever key you want to, then we'll simply call jump, just like that. Now I can return back to the editor, select our prefabs folder, and then our ground tile. I'll double click to open it up, and you'll see that the layer is default. I'll click add layer, go to the next empty slot, and input ground. Now I can select our parent tile, and set its layer to the ground layer, and yes, change the children. Now if I exit the ground tile, click on our player, and scroll down to the player movement script, you'll see a new variable, ground mask. If I select the drop down, I can choose ground, and that means that the ray cast from earlier will only return true if it hits something with the ground layer. We can play the game now. We can still use left and right. Space to jump appears to be working, but it seems a bit floaty now, and I don't really like it. I'd prefer it if the jump was snappier. To do this, I'll exit play mode, go to edit, project settings, and select physics. In here, I'll change the gravity on the Y from negative 9.81 to be negative 35. I'll exit the project settings, and then we'll also have to increase our jump force, so I'll set that to 600, then hit play again. That feels better to use already, and if I go to an obstacle and jump, I'm not floating nearly as much as I was before. Great, let's move on to creating new obstacles. In our prefabs folder, I'll select the obstacle, then hit Ctrl D to duplicate it. F2 to rename, and I'll call it obstacle tall. If I double click to open it up now, 
I can select the only element inside it and duplicate it. I'll set its scale to 1 on all axes and its position on the Y to 1 as well. I'll remove the box collider from this as well as the obstacle script and then go into the base object. All I have to do here is change the box collider's size so that it fits the whole obstacle now. You can see that it only covers half of it. So I'll set its size to 2 on the Y and its center to 0 0.5 on the Y and now it seems to outline the whole obstacle properly. Now we have to spawn these obstacles randomly, so I'll go to our scripts folder and open up the ground tile. I'll create two new variables. The first one will be serialized field game object tall obstacle prefab, and the second one will be another serialized field float this time and tall obstacle chance. I'll set that equal to 0 0.2 for now. Now in this spawn obstacle function, at the very top we have to choose which obstacle to spawn. This is actually quite simple. So I'll say game object obstacle to spawn to create a new variable type of game object which is the type of these obstacles and by default, I'll set that to the obstacle prefab, which is just the normal obstacle. Now I'll say float random is equal to random dot range 0f to 1f to get a random number between 0 and 1. And then if random is less than tall obstacle chance, then the obstacle to spawn will be equal to the tall obstacle prefab. If you want to add more types of obstacles, you can just extend this using if the random is less than another value, set the obstacle to spawn to a different obstacle. With this done, in the instantiate function, I can instantiate the obstacle to spawn now instead of just hard coding the default obstacle. Now if I go back to the editor, we should be able to test it out. I'll go into our prefabs folder and open up the ground tile. In here you can see a new slot for the tall obstacle prefab, so I'll drag and drop that in, then maximise the game view and hit play to test it out. Jumping over the shorter obstacles still works. But as you can see, you can't jump over a tall obstacle. That's the end of this tutorial, and that also concludes the series. If you have any requests for future videos, make sure to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.